down with OTC. down with otc what's going on crypto family welcome to on the chain jeff what and is chip on man i was getting ready for our round two of that song getting it <laughs> yeah, i like that jeff mm. it's a lot of fun so we got Gotta a big show live plan today done. how do we pack it all in we're gonna attempt to do that what we're gonna do whatever we can do to pack it, it all down in. That's right. So chip off the old block. Florida in the house. Bra. Some dude in Orlando is in the house. Some dude. I love, hey, what's up, some dude? What's up, dude? Some dude. Some that. dude. So we're going to talk about, you know what, there's, we, we've talked about the SCCV Ripple. We've hinted at stuff going on over at SBI over in Japan. Land SBI Japan, you know, you can't sleep on it. There's so much going on over there. And, you know, I want to dig into that a little bit. And, you know, there's just... All sorts of cool things that happen on a daily basis. You know, I mean, you've got BTC up and down. You've got the OCC talking about um, the possibility that DeFi can actually end bank fraud. And, you know, I, yeah, every day, man, every day, something new. Something new and something spectacular. <laughs> and speaking yeah. of spectacular, that you know, is the Monero load. Look at that. Monero. Monero. It's Monero. Monero. All right, let's do this. Ready to get started, everybody? I'm let's ready. Let's go. Let's, let's go. kick it off. Welcome. To on the chain with Jeff and Chip. Oh man, here we go. 
All right. Michael saying Brooks has gone from the OCC end of week. And, you know, someone else was commenting about that, that it'd be a shame to see my, uh, see Brooks going, Brian Brooks going. Um, but I was just checking it out and, you know, he was appointed in November. Um, and then he, his term was re-upped uh, last week for five years. Um, interesting. So he's not, so who's saying he's going someplace? I mean, I know that they, well, a lot of people think that he's going with the administration changeover. Well, I know but that they nominated like was, they have a yeah. new chair, right? I don't know why they didn't just keep Roisman, but Roisman's pro crypto. The new guy's pro crypto, but we shall see what ends up happening. Just because somebody's nominated doesn't mean they're going to get there. Who knows? That's true. And just because he was this, a professor, doesn't mean he's pro crypto. Joshua Ashby, Wales. I 1 a.m. here. Man, do I got a good story about Wales. Woo! I'll have to tell it some time. But um, I spent some time there. Um, yeah, I got to say, man. I, Dude, no, that's, it's, it's a good time over there. I, I had a good time in Wales. There. Well, there's castles yeah. and stuff. There's, uh, there's a lot of good stuff, man. I met some amazing people. Um, the Welsh are amazing people, man. And I was yeah. traveling with some Brits, and they do not like the Brits at all. They're like, you can come in this drinking establishment, but not your friends. I'm like, wait a minute. Somewhere where an American is, is liked more than somebody else, like in a, in a, you know, a Brit, it was absolutely fabulous. Yeah. I was like, all right, guys, yeah. see you later. I'm going to go drinking. Yeah. See you later. Good luck. Yeah. Man, so we're heading, we're heading down the coast, and we're, you know, see the signs this way to Wales. And so we start talking about Wales, and my son was probably like three or four at the time. Or saying, oh, we should just go, you know, drive drive over to Wales, go hang out there for a few days. And my son's like, what? Wales? Where are the whales? Why are there whales out here? <laughs> whales. Wrong whale, man. <laughs> um, I'm trying to think of the other cool place that I went. Um, that'll come to me during the thing. But it was another. It's, it was hey, absolutely stunning. Who's this guy, Sir John? Comments Lots of drinking he's there, says too. Michael. Beautiful place. Yeah, no doubt. Dude, no doubt look beautiful. at this Sir John guy over here. He's new here. Sir John, man, knock it off, Mister. Yeah, you know. But I will tell you what. What's I will that? say. I will say this. You know, if you have to think about all of the great things going on right now, you got to remember one person just popped in. Come on, man, Berserker. Berserker. <laughs> Berserker's in the house. What's up, Berserker? Berserker. <laughs> and then uh, before we get into this too much, I just want to say, um, first of all, smash those thumbs up if you're new. Why not? Give it a shot. Subscribe. Click that notification bell. Go check out our other channel. It's always fun. And also, too, we've got this going now. A lot of people are pretty happy. We actually saw a couple of people reached out and said, you know, thank you for doing the, the podcast because I usually don't catch it live. I catch you guys the next day. And uh, then they listen to the podcast. So it's pod.co slash on dash the dash chain. I wish yep. you could just get it all together, but that's just how they did it. And um, you can listen to us, take us on the go. You know what I mean? And then, Jeff, I want you to talk a little bit about this. The virtual blockchain meetup, January 31st. No, so check this out. So one thing that we've been wanting to do for a while is set up a virtual blockchain conference. Or not virtual, we want to get into the blockchain conference. But, you know, that takes a lot of planning, a lot of things that have to go into it. Um, And so, you know... Chip and I have gone to tons of conferences. I'm sure a lot of people here have gone to conferences too. Uh, and lately, it's been all about the virtual conferences. So we said, you know what, you know what would be great is to do a virtual meetup. And so we looked for some software to do that, found the software. And January 31st, we're going to do the first ever virtual conference sponsored by OTC on the chain. It's going to be a blockchain conference. We've already got some people lined up. So we've got Crypto Eddie's going to be there. We've got some people from BitTrue that are going to show up. Might have some other guest appearances. Uh, so it's going to be exciting, but consider it to be the first one. And really, it's about the community. It's not about uh, you know all the people you know that we can bring in to speak. The idea is to let everybody mingle and, and chat. And it's kind of cool, too, uh, because it allows you to sit at tables and you can share your camera, don't share your camera, share your mic, hang out, um, little groups, and then you get to move around amongst the the people that are there. And then it'll be interval breaks. So it's going to be something completely unique and different that uh, no one's done yet. And something, too, that, you know, puts you at a little bit of ease, too. This is private. It's not going to be broadcast anywhere. We're not going to rebroadcast it anywhere. It's, it's the same the way if we went to a meetup. Yeah, someone might get their mobile phone out. We can't prevent that. But 
you know, we kind of recommend you do show your, you know, if you can show your camera, wear a mask. I don't know. I mean, wear one of those masks anyway. They won't know who you are. But it's kind of like the whole idea of a meetup. If you're going to one in person, you'd want to see the person. And I understand if you want to, you know, protect your identity. I get that. But so Channing wants to know how you sign up. We're working on the sign up. That'll be rolling out uh, this week. The sign up uh, program that we're working with. um, So I guess they had to fix something. So we're getting that going. You guys will be able to sign up. And then once you get signed up, uh, you'll get uh, a link uh, uh, to the uh, to the to the meetup, to the conference. So it'll be really great. January 31st. Now, this is the first of, of many. We also have another uh, great uh, guest on the show that we're working on scheduling. Um, we're going to be bringing Alex Mashinsky back to the show, CEO of Celsius. Um, we're going to talk with him about a lot of the things that are going on in this space. So that'll be coming up soon. Lady Enigma says, is it free? Yes, the meetup yeah. is going to be free. So you don't have to it's worry free. about paying for anything. We're covering uh, the that cost. was the idea. Yep. So we got we got the cost covered. So it's going to be awesome. Um, but hey, let's uh, let's get into this. we got a bunch of people uh, bouncing on. And Berserk wants to know where the meetup is. The meetup is wherever you, you are. are man. Yeah. <laughs> It's virtual, uh-huh. man. It's going to be, it's virtual, but there's going to be virtual tables. You'll go down and sit down yeah. at a table, like pop in there. You'll be able to say hello to people. Um, yeah. Thank you. Luis uh, Cuevas. Appreciate that, man. Thank you for the great stream guys. Yeah. Thank you guys right. for coming in. Really appreciate yeah. that, Luis. Um, yeah. Very it's cool. awesome. Yeah. Thank you very much. Hey, quick, uh, if you guys want, just give a shout out where everybody's logged in from. Uh, it's all, you know, we've been looking to see where people, it's amazing. Chip, I was going last night. I was going through the analytics, and we have people virtually from all over the world here. Um, I love it, it, man. It's really great to see. Because it's one of the things Jeff and I really love to do. I mean, one of, I think two of our passions and is right. travel, and really, we're kind of like um, that's kind of out right now. You can't travel for anything. I can't even travel for a business really. So, yeah, um, we figured, hey, why don't we just put something together for the community? It's winter time. We can all get together. We can have a you know a laugh. We can meet people. We can have a conversation, talk to each other, kind of, you know, and again, see each other. But anyway, we've this got is Alonzo our... from St. Petersburg. Freaking awesome. St. Petersburg, uh, and not, not Florida, right? You're talking... And M. Ant is from Tuga, which is uh, he's from Portugal. Check and then we've Rose. got, uh, check out the top five uh, viewers of the OTC channel. We've got United States, United Kingdom, Canada, Australia, and India. How great is that? We can That's dance That's if awesome. we want to. We can leave our friends behind. <laughs> yeah. And if we don't and dance, we got, it's great. Go down here. You know what? I was shocked though. I mean, we've got people here. Let's see. Belgium, in the top, Toronto. in the top ten. Oh, I guess that's more than the top ten. Katmandu. But, Whoa. Yeah. Katmandu. Nice. Sweet. Darcy, all the way from Katmandu. That's awesome. Katmandu, Darcy. Darcy took a trip. Somehow broke out of uh, Ireland over there. So I don't know how that happened, but I'll do Katmandu. <laughs> Got think XRP in the security. House. Jeff, I'm gonna go with the one word answer. No. Jeff, you <laughs> what do you get? What do you have? I think it could have been a, it could have been a security at one point. At one point, you know, there could be a you know, I think <laughs> overall, I guess it doesn't really matter too much what we think. It matters the case that uh, Ripple's exactly. gonna build for it. And I believe that they've they've laid out a pretty strong case leading up to it that it's not a security. You know, there's a lot of people that are much smarter than us that have also you know, believe it's not a security uh, and it doesn't, you know, we've looked at it from every possible angle and talked to so many people about it and it doesn't meet the Howey test in any way, shape or form from what people are telling us. And, you know, if you look at it, you know, it just doesn't, it doesn't make any sense. The one thing that's always contradictory with that, and we've talked about this before is, and we're going to talk a little bit tonight about what's going on over in Japan with SBI is how could it not be a security in the UK and Japan, and it's a security here, makes absolutely no sense. And I believe that when it gets uh, in front of uh, the court, they're gonna see the uh, they're gonna see what needs to be seen. Jeff, check that out. Buffalo, that's close to my hometown, and that's uh, somebody hitting us Buffalo. up on Twitter. Uh, I grew up Buffalo. in North Tonawanda. You only know where that place is if you are from Buffalo. You'll know exactly. Born in Tonawanda, grew up in North Tonawanda. And wow. you never want to confuse the two. It's like those are fighting words. If you're from Tonawanda, you don't, you know, uh, associate it with North Tonawanda and vice versa. Yeah. But anyway, shout out from yeah. Buffalo there. Nice. 
That's awesome. Uh, so, Berserker says, go Bills. Yeah, bra. Yeah, go Bills. My God, the first time in 25 years to win the AFC East and a, champ, a uh, playoff game. Then we got Berserker. Yeah. He says, hey, get your moon pants on, people. Man, my moon boots have been on for a while. They're starting to have a little <laughs> bit of an odor to them. I've been wearing them everywhere. Yeah. Hey, so Chip, could you imagine, imagine you had a hard drive or a thumb drive and you knew that you locked up about 7,000 Bitcoin on it mm. and yes. you only have 10 attempts to unlock this thumb drive and you can't find the password and you've already used eight of those attempts. What would you do? I would cry. I would weep openly as a man. I would be like, the pressure would be just so intense, <laughs> you know? But yeah. I do know, I do know that there was, um, there was something like this that happened about a year or two ago, where a guy cost about a hundred thousand dollars, but he was rescuing at the time about a million dollars off of Bitcoin. So he paid a firm to crack it. Uh, it took him a couple months. Yep. But they eventually cracked at seven thousand. So, yep. So do you know who Stefan Thomas is? I do know Stefan Tomas because um, I have also have a, believe it or not, the reason I do know Stefan Tomas is because I have a moniker, I have a pseudonym that I use called Stefan Tomas. Yeah. And one of my buddies gave it to me back in the, about 20 years ago. And uh, it's a weird story, but anyway, it's uh, that's how I know Stefan Tomas. So, I'm, so uh, and I think we've, uh, we've actually coil. spoken to him Started before, coil. right? <laughs> exactly. So... He has this thumb drive. Uh, and this was reported in the New York Times and it was blasted out. It was in a whole bunch of other different places. Um, I always find it interesting when things hit the New York Times, uh, when it becomes to become a little mainstream when they're talking about Bitcoin. So Darcy was right. It was 7,002 Bitcoin in his wallet. And he said, and Stefan said that he's gone through, uh, he has two guesses left in this article. Two guesses, and it's valued at about two hundred and twenty million dollars. And he feels that he's getting closer, but that's it. I mean, closer. holy cow! Closer? I don't know how you can get it. I don't know how you can get any closer. How do you know? How do you know what the? Holy I mean, you can just cow. guess and say, "Hey, I think I figured it out," and then you go and put it in. And you're like, "Oh, I mistyped." No, I, that's happened to me before. Like, know. you know, when you're, you know, when you're like phones in your pocket and like it's on and all of a sudden like it locks you out because it thinks you're trying to turn it on. That's happened oh, to me yeah. once. And I was like, you get locked it's out terrifying. for 10 minutes if you have the wrong one. That yeah. freaks me out. But guess what? It can be replaced for, you know, hundreds of bucks, a thousand bucks, whatever. Not $220 million. 220. That's insane. Yeah. 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 Uh, what was Sir Johnson was the name? of the guy who had millions xrp and died without oh my god i remember that one too. oh yeah that was that was one of the invest he was a big family came from yep he was a very from a famous family and oh, then he, nobody knew um nobody knew what the password was he never had like an exit plan he, he was young he was like late 40s early 50s nobody expected them to go out you know yeah yep and uh you hmm. know what are you gonna do man i mean it's like there's it's kind of sad, but I don't know. I mean, so why is it only two guesses left? Will it lock him out permanently? Well, that's just uh, whatever he put it on. Yeah, he put it on uh, this thumb drive, and mm. it's got uh, – that's it. It's called an iron key, and he's got so, two more two more guesses. But guesses, I mean, don't you have it written down? Is it is it one of those crazy passwords like you the, type it in and you get like – because that's the worst thing is like I use so, really. So he lost the paper where he wrote down the password. No. I, I, yeah, he doesn't have a safe it's sitting in somewhere. My good gosh almighty. I yeah, can't even understand yeah. that. Yeah. So that's crazy. <laughs> that's crazy. He's right. That so um, so dad fit was, was uh, saying in here that um, it's uh, what time is it there? 1 a.m. I think it is. So he told, me to, he told me to Google his address and he's like watching from his bed. You see him right there? See him? Oh yeah, there he is, right there. You see him? There, dead center. Right there. There, there he is. <laughs> you just take this little guy like this, and you oh, throw him God. on one of these streets. Yep. And there he is, right there. I threw it right in the city center. I meant to like throw it at some road. Oh, there's right Birmingham. There. Birmingham. Birmingham. I've been there as well. Yeah, it's uh, what did I do there? I don't know. Something. Something. I don't know what I did there. I did <laughs> through there. But anyway, yeah. you know, it's um, it's uh, bam. Yeah. There it is. Yeah. So, all right. So as we're on the topic of uh, 
on the top of a Bitcoin. It was interesting. I was going through some of these articles and I ran into one. Um, they were interviewing um, yesterday. They got some feedback from uh, Alex Mashinsky, who is the CEO of Celsius. And they're asking him a little bit about where he thinks uh, Bitcoin is going and what the possibility of a pullback is. And, you know, he brought up some really interesting points. And I think each time that we've had him on the show, you know, it's been really, you know, the guy's got, you know, just a tremendous amount of information to provide and just, you know, everything that he's worked on and just his overall, you know, vision of, of what's happening in general. But one of the things that he said in the markets as a whole, and we've talked about this, is that there's always going to be a price correction. Things go up, they pull back, you know, and, and he even said that healthy price corrections are generally part of the market bull run. Uh, and so now while they're interviewing him, this is when Bitcoin was going down and he was thinking that 16,000 could actually, you know, be a potential pullback target for Bitcoin this time around. And obviously nobody knows, but, you know, as he's going through it, he's saying, um, he said, I've been predicting that Bitcoin and many altcoins will hit new all time highs during 2021 and beyond. Mm -hmm. uh, and then he says, uh, still, we will see several corrections like what's going on today. And, you know, he, for him, he looks at it as accumulation. Remember, one of the things that we talked to him about, he was he's big into holding, you know, not trying to predict a bottom, not trying to predict a top, not trying to trade, but holding for the long term. And he believes in accumulation. And he said here that uh, that this will allow savvy investors to accumulate these assets at a discount. I, I always think it's interesting, you know, hearing, you know, some of the things that he has to say. You know, what, what are your thoughts on that? You know, I mean, I, I, I care about what he says just because of who he is. And, you know, the fact that he's on a sixth startup and the fact that he's, you know, he, he's been he's always been a visionary, you know, from from his very first startup. He's had two of the largest exits out of New York, uh, the top 10 uh, New York startups, you know, as far as uh, exits are concerned. So when he says something, you know, I just feel like he's always has his pulse in the future. So I, I feel that, you know, and this one, I'm always blessed to have him on the show, Jeff. I mean, I'm like in total awe. He's fantastic just to listen to. And, you know, he's one of my favorite people in crypto. I mean, that I... And I have a lot of, uh, I mean, he's absolutely spot on right. You know, look, it, we're, the market's getting more mature. Um, you know, the altcoin market's going to go. We, there's a lot of things that are brewing. You know, there was a really, earlier there was a, um, there was a webinar with Patrick McHenry. He, McHenry, he's a, uh, he's a representative in the House of Representatives here in the U.S. And also they had Crypto Mom was on there, Hester Pierce. I saw this much of it no, and nothing was going on because I had too much other things going on. But anyway, I want to say hi to Metho Nelson, Metho Nelson, who says, late bird here. You're never too late for OTC. The door is always open. Whenever you pop in, we're happy to have you. And whenever you pop out, well, don't let the do door hit you where the good Lord splits you. I'm just saying. No, <laughs> I mean, quite honestly, it's all right. Yeah, so look at this. Yeah, that's another big one, Jeff. We've got the six months, the Tether lawsuits up on the 15. Now, Tether, oh, yeah, it's coming up. Tether's a whole different thing, Jeff. I mean... I don't want to make any predictions here, but Tether to me seems to have a little, it's, I don't know, man. I don't, I don't know if that's going to go well. I don't know. What do you yeah. think about that? What, what do you know about the Tether? Do you know anything about that? I don't know a ton about it. We got to look into it because we're coming up on the 15th. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, that's in like uh, three days. Uh, no, we got We definitely have to look into that. Maybe we'll talk a bit about that tomorrow. Um, it'd be good to dig in a little bit more, but I think Tether, you know, definitely has some issues to begin with because, they had issues before. Remember, I mean, they're the big uh, yeah. concern that they weren't holding one for one, you know, and they said, hey, you know, we're holding one for one. We're supposed to be, uh, you know, it's supposed to be pegged to an asset. Originally, it was pegged to a dollar. And then it's like, oh, well, wait a minute. It actually isn't. <laughs> you know, they had a basket of valuables, you know, so could be assets, could be gold, could be uh, whatever. Um, and I think that that threw people a little bit. Yeah, and then um, I just saw something here. Do, 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 do. You know, you go uh, to click on it, and then it just scrolls on you. It's incredibly weird. 15th is just submission date oh, for the gotcha. paperwork. They've been subpoenaed to produce. It's a production date. So, you know, it's just the beginning. But you know, we yeah. should definitely dig into it. And the reason why we have to dig, you know, there's multiple ca uh, cases going on. SEC versus 
crypto in general. And, you know, I think we really have to identify that and figure out what the heck is going on, you know, overall, because, you know, there's going to be a lot going on in the, in the SEC v Ripple right now, like we talked about yesterday as they present stuff to the docket, but really we're not going to see any momentum until we get a response. I want, I want to see that response from Ripple when we do, you know, we'll get uh, John Deaton back on uh, to dig into that a little bit. And then we got to follow up, find out what's going on with his case. Um, there was another attorney that uh, people were passing around a little bit and I reached out to him. Uh, be good to try to get him on. But I want, you know, when Alex, you know, we get Alex Mashinsky up, I want to get his take on the SEC. I know that he's had to deal with, you know, government agencies. And so it'd be really good to have his take on this. Yeah, I agree with that. And, you know, a lot of people, are, I think one or two people actually asked in the chat, they asked, like, what about the new, the elect, the chairman elect, which means um, Gary Gensler as the SEC chairman. This is a, a report that was going around. Dude, he guy looks really unhealthy. He, um, I'm not going to comment on it, but I think he could use a little bit of sun. That's all I'm going to say. Um, Ooh, look at his eyes, you know. Well, you know, if you take a still photograph, you ever go to take video and you like stop it in the middle of the scrub, people are always like with weird faces, you know. Um, he's a professor at MIT Sloan School of Management. Head, um, he yeah. headed the CFTC from 20, 2009 to 2014. He helped implement the Dodd-Frank mm -hmm. Financial Reform Bill. That is a disaster. Don't even want to get into that right now, but that was an absolute... Dodd-Frank is bad. Dodd Frank yeah. was probably one of the worst pieces of legislation that got passed in the last 40 years. Just absolutely, just horrific. Mm -hmm. um, that's just, of course, guys, my opinion, right? Um, Treasury Department from uh, 97 to 2001, part of the working government, mergers and acquisitions banker. Where else, Jeff? But Goldman Sachs. Everybody yeah. graduates from Goldman guy's Sachs smart. and ends up some. Yeah, every, they always end up somewhere, right? So oh, this guy's brilliant, though. I mean, he's a smart guy. Oh. Well, so. he is a smart guy, but he's also very pro crypto. He's also talked a lot about, you know, uh, digital currency. So, you know, he it seems like almost it seems like if you just took a crowd of people that were potential candidates and threw the dart in the crowd, you would hit somebody that, unless you hit like, you know, um, Jay um, Lizard uh, Clayton. I saw Mickey B. Oh, Fresh put Jay, that out yeah. today. Jay Clayton was him. a lover. He was a lover of the crypto. He <laughs> loved the crypto like nobody's business, you know, and uh <laughs> That was the problem. Like he loved it like nobody's business, and unfortunately, it was all of our business, and that's uh, turned out to be a bad thing, really. So, yeah, uh, yeah. So it's a uh, who knows, Jeff. It's it's hard to say what's going to happen, but you know, I mean, there's a lot of uncertainty really with anything. So I watched a little bit of that today because uh, McHenry, I think, has been brilliant. He's been a huge supporter. He doesn't author the bills, but anytime he's had a chance to speak up for the digital asset community, he's always said brilliant things. So I heard a little bit of him speaking. Um, he wasn't on camera. It was just this photo. I wanted to record it, but, man, I had so many things going on today. So I'm hoping that some of the community will clip it, takes out some decent excerpts, if there's any decent excerpts to take out. But um, it shall be interesting to see exactly how that one pans out. Yeah, that'd be good. Yeah. I just had – what happened to my – Um, I had something else to pop up here, and I'm just uh, – hey, I've got one, two, three. What's going on? Yeah, Lady Enigma. What is going on? Yeah, I wanted. I guess we can. We could probably. I'm gonna see if I can play this clip right here. This is the one that I saw. Let's see. Oh yeah. Yep. You know how hard it is to share a clip. You, you gotta know, hit like, that. Hit that little box that says share audio. You do, but you gotta make sure you hit the right tab though, Jeff. That's the whole. Oh thing. yeah, that's it. If you don't hit the right tab, then all bets are off. Oh, let's see. That's the wrong one. Where, there you go. I think it's that one. No, it's that then one. we get to talk about this uh, article I saw after you play that, that, which is the new OCC regulations, a double-edged sword for the crypto sector. This was a good one. This came out yesterday. Thought it was interesting to go through. All right. I'm going to attempt to let's let's attempt to watch this. Okay. Tell me for your sound. You have to hit the play. Oh, there we go. So one idea that's been uh, around, uh, it's, it's widely associated with Ripple, but it's not only associated with Ripple, is this simple chart. What if I move fiat to crypto and crypto to fiat? Is this called a bridge crypto or bridge currency? I can sort of say I can go from US dollars to Bitcoin or XRP. You, you, you fill in the middle and then move over to the other fiat, uh, Mexican peso in my example. Um, and might that 
take some cost out of the system. We have Sean's issue earlier of volatility. If the crypto is fluctuating a lot, that, that causes some issues. If there's a lot of cost or friction, because now you're doing two currency exchanges, not one. I'm calling crypto a currency for this purpose. I know that crypto is not technically Whoa, a currency, uh, but, but for this moment, let, okay, so what are you crypto a currency right now. So this is the guy that they're looking to head the SEC. And meanwhile, they're having a whole, you know, let's take out the $10 billion company out of that little city on the West Coast of California, the USA called Ripple. Yeah. So 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 he so he seems like he's discussing crypto as a currency, but he's saying it's not a currency in the same breath. Is that what he just said? I don't think so. I didn't hear that. Let me let's back up back? a little bit. Let's listen to it again. Technically a currency. Uh, Technically but, a currency. But for this job. moment, let, let me just call it. You have two currency exchanges, and thus you have uh, two bid ass spreads to pay. Just the market makers, you need to pay the bid ass spreads twice, and you have some volatility if the middle crypto is moving around. But this simple di. Well, you only have volatility if it takes ten hours to. Uh, to to go through. I mean, if it's three seconds, I, I can't imagine you have a lot of volatility. Program right. Is a big part of what Ripple is trying to create with X Rapid, right? X, X Current is a messaging app of Ripple's, and it's competing with Swift. And, and, and it has some reasonable adoption. A lot of banks are starting to use it. Interesting. Don't Pause that. that with another product, oh, which is an interesting. Hang on. He's about to say it. It does this that goes. Fiat to crypto, crypto to fiat. So what, problem, what, what pain points would this be solving if it worked in, in the um, cross-border? Interesting. Anybody remind the class what the, Tom? Well, this reduces the number of intermediaries. You don't have to have your bank engage with a correspondence bank, which engages with a local bank, which then it, it, it sort of... All right, so it might, I'm going to say it might lower the intermediation. Uh, interesting. Because you still have... It's pretty That's interesting, right? The guy knows his stuff. He's not just some wack wacko, two you know. Fiat size, two back so when when was back. this? Because I mean, he's talking about X Rapid and X Current. Well, I'm guessing this a while ago. This is not a little while new. ago. But he's a professor, this, this so was I mean, yesterday he was professing. Back. No, but the, the guy's definitely he's well, you know, studied on it. He definitely read into it. He, they're taking on Swift. I wonder how much XRP the guy owns. Yeah, let me let's listen to yeah, the, the guy. Let's Maybe he's in here. Let's listen to Jeff. You need some market making function, which in Ripple's case, they try to build into the application and they have market makers to provide liquidity. There was a question. Somebody mentioned liquidity, some liquidity, but it might lower the numbers of intermediaries. What else might it do? Four words. Anybody? So I want to anybody who, who has who, does anybody have the answer? Anybody? He's going to hold his hands up forever, man. Let's see. So um, holy cow. Now he's. How did this? Um, there we go. So uh, Mickey oh. Refresh put this up. Uh, he said, "You're it's." Wow. Ginsler it refers is. to XRP as a currency as professor, and this is late 2018 during his MIT class in crypto slash DLT, because they put up this, this strong case, uh, blah blah. So and then who else? And I also saw. Wow! I just realized my thing over here in the in the software, my. Uh, chat is frozen. I'm like, why is nobody talking? I look over at my YouTube chat and it's like, Psh. and I <laughs> saw high crest. Yeah. So there's a lot of, there's a lot of great engagement on this whole thing, but bottom line here is, um, holy cow, is that he's, you know, I mean, he's, he's talking about X rapid. He's talking about liquidity. He's talking about XRP. You know, it's good that so thank you for that. Mickey B fresh. He always like digs up this stuff. 2018, yeah, we're talking awesome. about two year, two 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 and a half years ago. Yeah, so that's, that's always that, a good sign. Yeah. And it was exciting. 2018 was exciting. And he was probably, it was right around that period of time. The market went crazy. He's into it. Hey, he's an MIT guy. You know, I mean, it's, guy's really Super thinking. Super dovish on crypto, yeah, that, for sure. That's an, that's an old comment that's stuck. Our chat on here is stuck. There's a ton of chat going on over on YouTube. But uh, actually, there was a, a comment here from, and we can't put it up there because it's not How in the- How about this, Jeff? Matt LaRoche says, um, oh, Genzo cool. looks like he should end each sentence with blah, blah, blah. Blah, 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 yeah. blah. Dude, those are all old comments, man. I don't the care. Comments are like gone. Like <laughs> but Hamilk, 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 Hamelk says, does the truly transformative asset XRP defy charting rules when it moons, or does it do something familiar and mathematical? 
I'm gonna read it over here on this other monitor. Here. I can't stand it when I'm not. I'll tell you what I'm gonna that do. That was Jeff. that was let a me... super chat. That's a super chat from Jeff. Uh, let Hamill. me bounce out. Let me bounce out. I'm gonna come back in see if it refreshes for me. So give me one second. I'm gonna bounce out of here. All right. I'm gonna be all by myself. All right. I'm all by myself now. So that's awesome. All right. So while he's gone, let me go over to the uh, back to the chat because the chat was gone here. Sorry, I got to look over at my other screen. I wasn't planning on using this monitor. Um, I like this. I kind of pawn. Wish I had teachers like this when I was in school. They were more like babysitters. Yeah, how great is that when you've got someone that's actually, you know, well-versed in the space, that understands the space, you know, and, and can actually, uh, you know, dig into things. I think that's that's really great. Um, still, the chat over here is not working. That's dead. Um, over here, it's dead over there. And I don't think it's dead on this side, but this one is definitely stuck. It just like no, no, it's stuck. It, uh, now I, I come in here, it's completely blank. So anyway, we'll just have to show it, you guys. Oh out. god, I've got the XRP chat on the other side, so I can see. Or the XRP chat, I've got the XRP chat over here, uh, Chip. So don't worry about that. No, I've got the uh, YouTube chat going on over here. So Apex Crypto just walked in, You're and crazy, he said, man. "What's up? What's what's up? up? What's up?" What's up? So anyhow, where were where are we going here? New OCC regulations. Now it's interesting because um, so this this was on Decrypt. You know, I'm reading this article. I'm like, you know what? This is a great way of looking at the OCC regulations that are coming in for the crypto sector. And he said because you know they're trying to like sort out some of the winners and the losers. And he summarized it into, into three uh, points. One, um, he said, uh, last week's new crypto guidelines from OCC were hailed as a win. Uh, but then uh, Caitlin Long said that it was a double-edged sword. And then the Stable Act author, Roan Gray, says issues are more nuanced than just traditional banks versus crypto. Those are like some of the three key points in this article. But, you know, it really comes down to how you know, you're starting to see where the OCC is allowing banks to potentially use uh, stable coins uh, for payment activities. And then you have, um, you know, you have the uh, the Stable Act and it, this just keeps uh, coming up over and over and over again. You know, things that are that are uh, kind of occurring all at the exact same time. You know, so I'm looking at like some of these articles dropping and you see what the OCC is doing. Um, but even more importantly than that is, you know, one of the uh, one of the articles and one of and we went through it anyways with David Schwartz. You know, he's talking about the stable coin. We went through his art his article. I actually did a separate video on it, but it was all about Ripple. Um, well, I don't know, was it Ripple or is actually issuing? It was allowing banks, I should say, it's allowing banks to issue stable coins on the XRP ledger. You know, so you've got that. Then there was another article that Ripple uh, on the Ripple Insights talking about interoperability and neutral bridge currencies and the key to CBDC successes. Um, all you know, all these things are like meshing all at the same time. You know, I, it almost as though you know someone's sitting in a back room talking about it. Well, they might be sitting in the front room talking about it. It's hard to really know exactly what's oh, happening, right? Per se, you. they they could potentially be. Um, doing one of each. There's also some other news that I, I think is really relevant, especially to the community, the XRP community. But, you know, one of the cool things we found out today is that somebody from the XRP community is actually going to go work for Ripple. So we got none other than this is Matt Hamilton. You guys oh, know him as that hammer right. toe. He said, next month I'm joining Ripple on the XRP or the Ripple X team. I've been interested in the XRP ledger for a number of years. And I'm excited to build the Internet of Value. The ability to move around value as easily as information will be transformational to business and society. And this was uh, Ripple X put this out. We're pumped to have Hammer Toe join Ripple as the Director of Development Relations. Continue to work in the robust dev ecosystem for XRP. Join us in welcoming him. And then he says, for many devs, cryptocurrency and payments are still seen as an arcane area. But there's lots of development on solutions that use the XRP ledger. More and more use cases are being built on top of this tech. The community is already large and we're just getting started. What do you think about that, Jeff? How do, how do you feel about this? I think this is awesome for Ripple and for us, for the community. I think so. 
Yeah, I, I like that. You know, I mean, it's uh, it's it's really key. You know, I mean, really, you know, focused. Uh, and what he's what Matt Hamilton has done in the community. So, you know, I really think that when you, he gets plucked out of the community, he's going to still be engaged with the community and really focused on building. You know, and looking for builders. You know, what can the XRPL? You know, what can you build on the XRPL? Um, yeah, and he's, you know, how influential can it be? And he goes on to say, my goal is to work with the community, help devs get up to speed, learn about the features, functionality of XRPL, and highlight the amazing yep. work from existing developers. The most common That's reaction really I get cool. from devs is, I didn't know the XRP ledger could do that. You know, exactly. he's right. It's exactly. the biggest and there's no one telling you. Oh, they did. It's definitely a well-guarded secret. You know, where, where do you even go for that? Someone had asked a question uh on one of the videos not one of the chats but one of the videos was asking you know where can you go to actually sandbox um a smart contract you know and can you sandbox an ethereum you know even here on the xrp ledger where do you go to sandbox a project on the ledger you know how, how do you do it you know is it that i'm sure if you research you can figure it out but it'd be nice you know you've got people that are building and trying to share it with the community at large to get more people to build on it. There should be a little bit of a uh, ambassadorship outreach, you know, try to try to recruit people in, you know. Jeff, so, isn't this, so he's, uh, Chris says we saw a cool breakdown of the SEC lawsuit by Legal Briefs. That's who we reached out to, right? I think that's the guy from Legal Briefs. Oh yeah, Legal Briefs. Yeah, I reached that's, out that's to That's who him. we reached out to to see if yeah, I'll come see on if the I can show. Get him Chris, on. So. Yeah, that guy was interesting. He was good. You know, as I was wa you know, going through it, you know, definitely had a good take on it. Um, yeah, so yeah, you know, I thought that was uh, that'd be great to have him on. You know, to kind of dig in. He also brought up <clears throat> John Deaton and John Deaton's case. Um, John Deaton also responded to his uh, his video. Yeah, I thought it was really cool. Yeah, and then Hamilton finishes up by saying, "Hey, let's fix that. Developers starting next month will be hearing from me a lot, and I look forward to hearing from you. Comment below on what's most important." Of course, the non-developer Chip pops in with uh, congratulations, Matt. Passion and expertise will make a huge contribution to the team. Ripple's fortunate to have you. Godspeed, brother. Yeah. So anyway, nice. I'm, I'm real happy for him. And then you know how everybody does this. You know, yeah, you know, that's the, who's that Chip guy? That's me right there. Right? So, the, so you know how they say, you know, how it's going, you know, how it started, how it's going. So here's how it started. He started this. Look at this letter here that he wrote. Sorry, I'm going to make that smaller there. This was done in de December 2017. Sir, madam, my name is Matt Hamilton, writing you regarding any job opportunities you may have, work, uh, you know, for remote work from the UK. This is what nice. he wrote to, to um, yeah, developer of technical community. Okay, so he's involved in open source, is freshly come here, and then this is how it's going. Pumped to have him join. Isn't that amazing? So it's pretty cool. This was fun. It just goes to show you, anytime I've seen him get on a show or debate somebody, always calm collective people will be going but xrp is a crappy banker's coin he'll be like well elaborate on that so he'll, he's always just like cool as ice which i really like and uh, it's really cool to see that jeff somebody from yep. within from the community man one of us nice. is excelling Sweet. to ripple so they, they could use someone like him because his passion is just phenomenal and he gets it and it's cool to see that happen so good for him man nice congrats congrats to him that's awesome Hey, you know, it's it's really, yeah, go ahead. What do you got there? I'll just say like this, Jeff. This oh. is something that came across the wire not too long ago. You remember we talked about Visa and Plaid were going to have this, uh, they were going to do this uh, merger deal? Yeah, So yep. they, they, they announced today the companies terminated the merger agreement and agree with the Department of Justice to dismiss the litigation re related to the proposed transaction. The proposed transaction was first announced in January. So we talked about this almost almost exactly a year ago when this happened, because we started to see big players in the space accumulating, but they saw, you know, they're agreeing with the Department of Justice. Yep, yep, we agree. And uh, they don't want to go into some lengthy uh, litigation with the Department of Justice. So it's easier just to walk away. But interesting, man, it's like all of a sudden, you're starting to see some friction with with fintechs, you know. We've got fintechs, and if you guys don't know who Plaid is, I'll tell you who Plaid is. You don't know them, but you know the technology. If you go log into your bank, uh, if you go log into your, your bank remotely through another app that says, "Hey, enter your bank," you log in. That's Plaid. Almost everybody uses Plaid as like middleware, 
it's because they already have it set up and they have all the regulations in place and everything. So Visa was looking at acquiring that. They got a massive business because you pay every time somebody connects. So if you're on any app that requires, like for example, an exchange, um, they say so put your bank credentials in there, that's Plaid. Almost 99% it's going to be Plaid. So that's where they're, um, they sort of back that off everywhere. a little bit. Yeah, it's they use it everywhere. Man. Everywhere you go. So they just kind of, this is about a lot of saving face in the rest of the article. Well, we realize our errors and we agree with the Department of Justice and what do we know? We're just simpletons. You know, yep. More of that. Yep. So, man, so going into, you so know, kind of going into some other stuff. Um, so I wanted to get into a little bit about S, oops, SBI. And, you know, I thought SBI is really great because you've got, you know, you've got a real passion for uh, what, you know, what's going on with Ripple, um, really rolling out the RippleNet solution. But some of this, some of the news goes back, you know, all the way back to like October, November. And I think for, you know, some part, you know, it's overlooked a little bit, you know, because things going on in Japan. Um, but, you know, I was going through uh, SBI and then I stumbled on some of the uh, uh, press releases that they had on MoneyTap. And, you know, they're doing a lot more because they're moving money between Japan and, and Thailand. Um, you know, there's SBI Remit, which is moving money to a lot of parts of, uh, of Asia. You know, but then I really focused on this money tab because, you know, I look at money tab. I'm like, hey, you know, it's kind of like a money gram. But, you know, money tab is an actual subsidiary of SBI holdings. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm reading through this, you know, it's all about. Uh, a notice of investment in MoneyTap uh, by Ripple, and you know from uh, from SBI. And so here's Ripple again, you know, moving uh, into a position where we saw what they did with MoneyGram. Now that you know they did something very similar with uh, with MoneyTap, uh, and it's it's really critical because here you have movement of money between uh, Korea, um, Japan. Um, Thailand, uh, there's going to be a lot of expansion going on, going on. And then you look through this press release and they focus on, you know, you know, what is XRP? What is RippleNet? And here it's interesting because SBI holdings, you know, the banks, the partnerships, all of this, and they're very outright and, you know, forthright with the information on this. And I'm looking and I'm like, God, this is great. You know, there's like this one paragraph uh, in this uh, in this article here or this press release, it says XRP, the digital asset used in RippleNet, Ripple's global financial payments network, was designed to serve as a bridge between fiat currencies and remittance transactions, giving access to on-demand liquidity. You know, it's so awesome because you know you don't see banks over here uh, really getting into talking about, hey, look how great this is. Um, even you know when they invest, uh, you know Ripple's investing in MoneyGram. You don't see them spending a huge amount of resource and time getting into and talking about this. And they get into it more that, you know, they talk about XRP as an open source, decentralized blockchain technology, which can consistently handle 1500 transactions per second, can settle in three to five seconds, faster, less costly. And they get into all the things that, that we know. Um, and then, Jeb, as you scroll down, you know, they start talking about money tap is using you know a QR code so they've simplified simplified the movement of money and then the excite you know it gets even more exciting because then you look at the list of money tap shareholders and it's like a it's a list of you know a who's who of banks uh in Japan uh, and that's what I want to I gotta I gotta pull this up you gotta check this out you know hang on a second let me I'll see if I can there. yeah it. I mean anytime an SBI I mean you know Katal is just a brilliant brilliant uh entrepreneur visionary another one of the favorite crypto people because there's just and he, he's really so much more i mean he built one of the bigger banks over there it's really phenomenal can you see that check that out no you gotta share your screen boss i did i just I didn't put it. it up there i didn't want to add it there you go oh, there you go so check it out qr code registered trademark at denso wave yeah yep that's our, you know, but right here, look at this. So here's SBI holding. So all the list of money tap shareholders. Oh, wow. And this is, that. you know, look at that. And so Ripple just invested in it. Now they're getting the RippleNet. 
They're rolling out with the XRP. They're rolling out with a QR code, the simplification. But like I said, it's like it's a who's who of all the Japanese banks, you know, and, and this is where this is the, the difficulty and the complexity of trying to figure out how in the world is the SEC pursuing a case against Ripple with some sort of a claim that XRP is a security. It just makes no sense in any way, shape or form, you know, where, you know, you've got the utility of this over in Japan, you know, rolling out full steam ahead. That makes no sense. It doesn't make any sense, but you know what makes a lot of sense? Silence. What makes a lot of sense? It's written right on your shirt, Jeff. It's a big hint. Oh, there you go, right there. That's what Auto makes it. sense. That's all you can do right now. I mean, unless you want to like take some chances, but that makes a lot of sense. You know, because at some point you'll be able to exit on top, which would be great. You know, you'll be able to get out of there alive. So I am. Yeah, this is IMF, good. Lady IMF. Enigma. I want to say hi to Lady Enigma. Thank you also, you know, and all, Connie too for promotion always. You know, you guys are always fantastic. We do have a Telegram roundtable channel. It's right there. T dot me slash on the chain on round table we also have one slash on the on the chain but we're trying to what we're what we're looking to do is build a presence in so many places you know it keeps growing and growing um and that's a way to there's a way to people go in there and discuss and it's getting bigger too it's great a lot of people drop some cool news items like little tidbits that we didn't see which is always fun to kind of you know check that out which is which is always a good thing yeah so you know, Oops. there's a there's a lot. I, what else you got, Jeff? I got something. Uh, oh, go ahead and pull it up. I wanted to pull this up because it's something that we've talked about before quite often, as sort of like a as a uh, FYI. We always say like, be careful when you trade without proper risk management. And I love the response to this tweet, right? So this is Binance saying, don't trade without proper risk management. Beginner's Guide to Understanding Risk Management. And then C3Nick chimes in. That's funny you talk about risk management while offering up to 125 times leverage. Hilariously hypocritical. I thought, I just thought that was funny, man. It's like, oh, that's it's a like, great, that's a great response. I like yeah, that. Yeah, it was like, it's like, yeah, yeah, be careful, be careful, 125 times. <laughs> you know, nothing to see here. That's, Everything's cool. Don't. That's really don't, funny. Don't, that is good. Risk management. Yeah, here, uh, why don't you uh, borrow on your uh, digital asset? I, I like exactly, it. Exactly, right? They got to leverage it. Yeah. What the hell? But, uh, but understand, but understand the leverage that you're using. Yeah, you know, if you understand the risk, then that's a different story. Yeah, Connie says hit the like, subscribe, the bells, thank you, butterfly, and lots of pretty music there. So thank yeah. you for that, Connie. Yep. Appreciate that. Look at this. Um, ECB and BOJ were talking about XRP already in 2018 with the Stella project. You should check it out. Stella. Stella. I'll check some Stella, Stella beer out. That's what I can tell you right now. I'll check some of that out. It's one of my favorites. Yeah. I uh, see Mr. B in the house. I see someone say, hey, Mr. B. Mr. B. Mr. Berserker. That's Mr. Berserker. Mr. B. Zerker. Mr. B. Zerker. The Zerks. Then. Yeah, Stefan Thomas on New York Times is great publicity for ILP and Coil. You know, it is. People probably were reading that article going, what is ILP? What is Coil? They don't know what it is. So anything that promotes, you know, yeah, yeah, okay. And also, too, there's a little bit probably like, oh, my gosh, if I was him, I'd feel horrible. My God, how, what would I do? So there's that little sympathy, sympathy for a company. Maybe I should go check this company out. What are they all about? That's kind of an interesting uh, kind of an interesting player right there. Thanks for that, GDLT. Yeah. G. Oh, so, so here's what I here's one of the things that I wanted to talk about. <laughs> and it was interesting because earlier today, Brian Brooks put out a tweet. And he said, decentralized finance or DeFi is coming. This guy, man, this guy is like, you know, so far lightning years ahead of the rest of the government, you know. And here he is. He's like, all right, you know, you know, a lot of us, you're just trying to grasp the idea of the DeFi. And he's like, decentralized, it's coming. It's here. And he then he goes on and he says, the banking system and the rest of us need to get ready. You know, meaning that, you know, the banking system needs to get their act in order. And it was even more interesting because, you know, he's putting out some ideas that it's actually going to help, uh, you know, get rid of fraud in the banking space. And 
you know, I find that, you know, so overwhelmingly interesting, you know, because, you know, the OCC talking about the crypto space, you know, Brian Brooks going after the banks, you know, saying that, look, DeFi is putting the banks on notice for many different reasons. The whole digital asset space in general with the exchanges and uh, there's you take out the, you know, the you take out the layers, these fat layers of too many uh, hands uh, kind of in the in the pot, you know, at the banks. And this is the direction that they know we're moving in. And, you know, it's it's great. I think it's outstanding. You know, hopefully this guy is able to stay a little bit longer to really see it out, you know. So one of the things that he brought up here and there he shared an article by um, I don't even know who's this. Was that uh, Financial Times? Oh, no. no. This was sorry. This was Brian Brooks wrote this article. Yeah, it was in the Financial Times. And it's an opinion piece. Get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready for self-driving banks. And he says lenders run by algorithms and blockchain tech will require 21st century regulation. This guy, man, this guy is so far. Oh, there you go. You pulled it up. Nice. So this guy is just so far ahead. I mean, this this is the guy. The guy knows what he's talking about. Freaking awesome. It's really awesome. He really is, you know, it's like somebody comes along, they just get it. You don't want to like clobber that guy. I like this tweet too that he put out. Um, Christian Carlo, former FTC chair, CSLMN, he total respect for Brian Brooks, call for regulator courage and reinterpreting old regulatory frameworks to better accommodate rather than stymie new exponential digital technology. Brian Brooks says, hey, thanks, uh, Christian Carlo. Appreciate that. Um, US, US OCC is carrying on innovation tradition. You played a big role in launching. He really did. And, you know, these two guys are both on the same page. And Christian Carlo, don't forget, wrote that um, fantastic piece about how XRP doesn't fit all of prongs of the Howey test. If it's one, maybe two tops, but it doesn't fit enough. And I thought that was absolutely remarkable. So... Anyway, Jeff, I just wanted yeah. to do a big shout out to, um, you know, everybody that popped in here tonight. You know, God, really appreciate you guys, you know, um, coming in here, um, sharing your time with us. You know, remember, to, if you're first time, click that subscribe button, notification bell, and then we have that other channel. And we'll be having more rollout about our virtual virtual meetup. This is exactly what it's going to be. Go hang out. And the good news is we're doing it early in the morning in the States so that people... In other parts, we re we wanted to make sure that more people from uh, our friends from outside of the U.S. You know, you smart people have that have regulators that understand crypto. Yeah, we need you to be part of this because here, bunch of dummies, nobody knows anything. Jeff, what do you got? So uh, you know, I'm I'm saying I'm thinking we got to dig into this whole tether thing a little bit more. A lot yeah. of uh, comments and questions about. You know, should we be worried because of Tether's price manipulation? What What's the SEC going to be doing? All those things. Got to get into that tomorrow. You know, we'll dig into that a little bit more. Um, I think that'll be a, a good one. So we'll start looking some of that up. Virtual meetup January 31st, which is a Sunday, 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. And we'll be, uh, we'll be sending out a way uh, that you guys can sign up for it. It is going to be awesome. First of its kind. I don't think anyone has done it yet. Not yet, man. It's always good to be first, but sometimes, you know, that always work out for everybody being first, but eventually it's good it's to be great. first on something, right? It's going to be awesome. Yeah. Yep. So, guys, we'll yep. thank you very much for showing up. We'll see you on the next China. one. Sir Chip. John wanted me to mention China. Okay. Well, thanks China. for saying that. Now you just like blocked our stream. Thanks, man. <laughs> Chip and Jeff out. We'll out. see you on the next Let's one, go. guys. See ya. Are you down with OTC? Please like, subscribe, and click the bell to be notified when the next video drops.